There is a moment in the early evening, in the transition between day and night, when the colours of sunset have faded, but before the sky has been totally overtaken by the black of night, when the sky may be experienced as an unfathomable, aching blue. And when the lights of the city sky take over from the twilight, this blue becomes transformed into neon blue, a blueness that is both so dark and sonorous and yet so full of light and colour. I wrote an essay about the blue that I use in the painting that is the painting that's part of this program. This blue has obsessed me. Hello, I'm Barb Bolt, uh, and I live in Coburg in Melbourne, Western, oh, Western Australia. I don't, I don't live in Western Australia at all. My God, I was born there. I, I just, I wanted to be a city girl. I wanted to leave, leave the, um, once I walked out of home, I never wanted to go back there again. Um, and then, um, but living with uh, an Italian who loves gardening and you just, I've just come to love it again. Plums, olives, lemon, mulberry, about nine or 10 months of the year, we've got flowers and then you just buy flowers the rest of the year. So always we've got flowers inside as well as outside. So that's, that's special. I used to always work plain air and so um, that one was done of Estelle when she was studying. So that was about three hour painting. What about this one? That's my grandchildren. Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> that's Lawrence. But I want to tell you about the studio. And this was the old um, Coburg uh, tennis pavilion. <laughs> so it was just like it was closed. It had a couple of double doors. It's pretty sweet, isn't it? Being able to look out. I'm very privileged to have a studio. As I started to develop more of an artistic uh, career, as I kept painting longer, what came back to me is that what was central to my work was always light. And in my shift from living in the country, to actually living in the city. I had to start to think what, what is the nature of, of urban light in contrast to, to country light. And I suppose that the difference starts to come through in the whole technology and technical light and techno light and neon light. The first um thing I do is just mix, mix paint and I'm work, using medium um, linseed oil to break it down. And I'm wanting to get it so it's, it's fluid enough that I can just float it on. That size can, it's not, I mean compared to what other painters use it's not that large at all but it's my perfect body size. Yeah, I think about the, the sort of density that the, the paint needs to be at is something close to, to cream, but not, not uh, thick cream, but whipping cream today. I guess there are moments where our affects are so strong that they break with any sense of, of an unified self, I guess, an, an identity that we can hold on to. You know, I, I mean, I'm sure you ex have experienced times when you feel that your identity is in shatters <laughs> and it, you can't hold hold of anything. It, it sort of slips and it transmutates and flows all over the place and you can't hold yourself in. And in, in times of grief and in times of unhappiness, those are, are real times where I think we, our, our identity becomes very fragile. 
but just come and look at see the way that the paint actually starts to break up. I mean, you, the, the thing is you, you, you lose so much as you go, some of the magic things you just lose because they only last for a minute and, you, and the more that you work them, a lot of the kind of those effects disappear because they get overworked. When I have preconceptions that I bring to it, the work dies. It's, it's something about um, catching it alive. And I think Francis Bacon talked about catching the thing, the, the fact alive. To actually bring life to a work is not coming to it with preconceptions, um, but actually trying to be open. OK, I think I'll leave it now. Because I added more terps, you start to see the black breaking down altogether and losing its integrity. So you have this kind of boundary. Uh, what's happening is the dissolution of boundary between things. You can never see yourself as separate from the environment. I mean, you do when you first enter it, you're kind of rolling around like this little kind of lost thing. But as you become part of, uh, as you actually live in an environment, it's, it's an extended notion of self that you're actually never separate from the environment in which you live. There is a kind of a figure who is emerging from the ground. There's kind of a, there is points at which the figure also collapses into the ground. So you've got this kind of tension between figure, I suppose, identity, if you like, emerging out of, but also identity as actually being part of the ground. So you don't have this strong, you know, at points in a painting there'll be a, a strong figure ground distinction, but at other points there is a collapse. And I guess there is a kind of a metaphorical element to that. The figures are very much alone, but they have a sense of, of almost pathos, of alienation, of isolation. Um, now that wasn't intention, you know, that, that's, that's the magic, I think. That, that wasn't intentional, but if you start to think of it, I'd just come to Melbourne, I was hellishly lonely. You know, I, I, I mean, it's taken me more for four years to make friends, you know, so um, I was... Um, and I, Melbourne was just an alien creature to me, you know, everybody had friends, everybody had been here forever, and people didn't want new friends, so you kind of have these incredible barriers to entry. When I came to Melbourne, it took me, took me three or four years before I started to actually see the light of Melbourne. So it's about once you're located in a place, you actually then have to open your eyes and stop seeing with the preconception, the eyes that you had before. So it's sort of like, I'm, I'm so influenced and imbued by urban light now. If I went back to Kalgoorlie, I couldn't probably see it as it was then. One of the things about urban light is that it fills a space with this incredible, alive, uh, translucent space. Melbourne's the most livable, wonderful place to walk. And so what is very characteristic about Melbourne is, is walking. And so the people inhabited my paintings are walkers. And they started to want to hop into the canvas. driving across um, the bridges and looking back over the city and actually seeing the horizon, seeing the light and seeing the neon of Melbourne, but then against the, the, the sky that's not yet black. It's still got that colour, deep colour of blue in it. Neon light, urban light, insinuates it in, itself into you. It actually becomes part of you. we see colour before we see anything else and blue is, has a special privileged place, then blue is the closest we come to infinity and being flush with the world and being not a singular identity. And it's the colour that we fall into. The moment that I remember was sitting drinking coffee, as one does in Melbourne, um, about dusk. 
um, just between the, the shift between day and night, twilight zone, sitting, drinking coffee at a place called Brunetti's, which is Melbourne famous, everyone in Melbourne drinks or knows of drinking coffee in, in Brunetti's, and looking up and seeing the sky and seeing uh, the, the lights of the building against that incredible blue of the sky, that magic blue that's, that's now part of the paintings. Um, and that was the moment, and in a sense that's probably the moment I realised that, that Melbourne was home. You know, I've been so alienated to actually find I am at home. And I think that would be fair to say that was the moment. <laughs>